Ennis Main, Cornish folk horror movie directed by Mark Jenkins. This one's coming at us from Neon Distribution in North America. Okay, which ha I they have built an absolute trust with me. They have been on an absolute roll. Um, two movies that I've seen from them in 2023 alone. Well, Ennis Main one and How to Blow Up a Pipeline directed by Daniel Goldhaber are my two favorite movies of the year so, thus far. I had recently watched his last feature, Bait, from 2019, and loved. So that contributed to the anticipation of Ennis Main. Bait is a drama following this fisherman, Martin, who lives in this small town with his brother. His roots go deep. But times are changing, tourism is rising, and the fishing industry there is, is declining. So he's very angry at, at, at the changing times. And it kind of follows different perspectives in this small town. And I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, fresh, in the sense here. The thing is, it was shot with a hand-cranked film camera, Bolex camera. Each roll of film is like three minutes long or something. So it's like 130 rolls of film to make bait, which totaled up to like 89 minutes. But the look of it, so it is the look of it that makes it so unique. This just authentic grain, right, of a, of a, of a silent film era camera. And also something that he does is he dubs in all the audio afterwards. So he's not like recording something also at the same time. He is post sync audio along with all like the noises, the folly. It's all done in post and it creates this very specific, very unique atmosphere or it almost it seems a little off sometimes, but but it, but it adds to the vibe of the whole thing, a vibe that I love so much. Nice poor roll, bro. Very nautical. You didn't have to sell us this house. Didn't we? Well, well, first of all, coastal fishing town, small coastal fishing town, uh, uh, nautical, that's my thing. And it, he seems to be very focused on texture, and I'm very much into the voice. So looking back at Mark Jenkins' timeline, his career timeline, really quick, he made a movie in 2002, his first feature film, and it got some acclaim. He won like a first director, debut director award, and then in the years after, he made a couple more feature-length films, and these weren't, these were all shot on digital. But in 2015, with the short Broncos House that's when he established himself as a shot on film guy. He dove head on into the hands-on process of film, the medium of film, and he never looked back. That is, that is his thing at this point. And Bait is definitely what established that voice. And then after Bait, he made some really cool music videos for Flight, Bicep, The Smile. And then that leads us to his Bait follow-up, Ennis Main from 2022. Well, shot during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic, but then premiering at the Cannes Film Festival in 2022. Ennis Main, the name, Cornish for Stone Island. So the movie, synopsis-wise, I'm going to run it down super quick. It is set in 1973. We are following a wildlife expert who is on this island. She is alone, and she is observing this rare flower. And then strange things start to occur around her, to her. On the island, it stars Mary Woodvine as the central character who is also in Bait and who is also Mark Jenkins' partner. She's, she's, an act, she's a stage actor, she comes from an acting family. Her dad also makes appearance in Ennis Main, who is also a, a British actor. I absolutely loved Ennis Main. And the thing is, maybe it's having seen Bait beforehand that I was kind of prepared for the experience. Although this one is a lot more experimental than Bait. Bait has like a, you know, a pretty straightforward, simple story to it. But Ennis Main, it's not easy. In fact, the way I would describe it is more of an experience. And someone might go, ugh, really? Skinnamarink situation? Yeah, I would compare it to Skinnamarink in a sense. In a sense that it's this atmosphere. But I mean, this one does have a story. There's something to hold on to. This woman, she is here. She has this schedule. She's doing this thing. We're following her do that. She's, and that's the thing about this movie. There's this repetitive nature to it that I think works really well for it because as 
she is getting up in the morning. She's going to check on the flowers. She's doing like a temperature reading. She's going back inside. She's writing in this log. You know, no changes or noting changes that happen, the, writing the temperature. And I think that works really well for when things start to go a little weird, when things start to change. And when I say change or fall apart, well, the thing is, when we first come into this movie, she's already seeing things, but it's more just in her imagination, things that pertain to herself, her personal memories, right? So maybe like a younger version of herself or something that she's talking to. Because who knows how long she's been on this island and alone, only periodically receiving like a shipment of, you know, supplies or something and talking to the, the boat guy like once, uh, I don't know, a couple every couple of weeks or something. Who knows? We don't know how long she's been there. But it's as time goes on when she starts to grow familiar with the landscape, when she observes not just the flowers, but, you know, a memorial that says a crew lost at sea in the 18 something. Okay, back in the day, or the mine shaft that she looks down into every day. I mean, this old house that she's staying in where you can just feel the history. And as the days pass, it seems like the ghosts, the history of the island are making themselves known. And she's just kind of there in the middle of everything, experiencing like past, present, future of the, of the earth, of the natural world here to explain. And see, that's what I'm talking about. I feel like for me in this movie, my viewing experience I find it best just to experience and just take in the atmosphere of it uh, as opposed to really trying to figure it out. But you could probably put, you could put a whole bunch of different interpretations into it. I found that it became more of just sitting in this atmosphere and letting it do its thing. Even if you couldn't, it couldn't make sense of what was happening in the moment. It was just, I, there was a lot that was being felt. Ghosty miners banging away into the night echoing into the misty air. Remnants of a time long past, weathered, rusty, dripping, candlelit rooms, candlelit mines, ew. <laughs> but yes, the dripping mines, the, the musty um, oldness of it all. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's so greatly captured here. The silhouette of an old chimney against the, 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 the dark, night air coastal grainy weathered are the words that strike and it's just it, it's a total vibe of a movie i can definitely sense this movie being quite a disappointment to from just watching the trailer because i mean i think how how would you create a trailer for this movie the the quotes and stuff in the trailer and it being marketed as this folk horror which i mean i would say it is i would say it is a folk horror movie cornish folk horror Unsettling is the word I would use. I feel like I feel like it would be very difficult to make a trailer that paints a true picture of it. But you know what I mean? Just like with Skin and Marink or something where people have an idea of what they're going into, they hear, oh, this is so scary. And that's why I think it's so cool that Neon is distributing this because perhaps people will go to the theater and watch this expecting that. But then what they do get, it, it hits them in a very unexpected way. I think that's what happened with Skin and Marink. Of course, there were people on the other side of it that absolutely hated it but I think there were other people that were like deeply affected by it that wouldn't have otherwise gotten a chance to, you know what I'm saying? And so this movie is also shot on 16 millimeter, a similar situation to Bait. Um, post sync audio, just like that. So it has that weird otherworldly vibe to it. Although this one doesn't have much dialogue to it because this character's alone. There is dialogue, but it's very minimal. It's more like sounds of, the, of nature, of the earth. I'm talking banging, clanging, metal on metal, pounding, miners, ghosty miners from within the earth. I love that stuff so much. But this one has like a very true, authentic 1970s look to it, where it could very well be from the time. Like a slow, long zoom, 1970s horror type beat, you know what I mean? And the colors in this are absolutely beautiful. The red of like a, a raincoat, the red, the yellow. It's also pretty funny, I was listening to an interview with Mark Jenkin, and he said that people were like, don't look now, don't look now, you know, with a, with a red raincoat but he said that it was not on his mind at all. So it wasn't like a callback to that movie or anything, <laughs> but it seems like it. It was just kind of a coincidence. Anyways, this movie is just one more reason to put Neon on the radar. Neon's also really great on the marketing of their movies. I mean, the trailer to this definitely got people very intrigued. And these really cool posters, like four or five of these really awesome posters that they created, I highly recommend this movie, and it's something that I really look forward to returning to. 
a, a, a second viewing. I feel like it is it is definitely a movie that would benefit from multiple viewings, knowing what it is. Mark Jenkins, just a very exciting singular voice, kind of reminds me of like a Peter Strickland. Very, very much so texture focused, auditory experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter Strickland. Robert Eggers, Peter Strickland is who springs to mind. I would place them together. I'm very excited for what he does next. And he also like does his own soundtracks, the score, where it's like kind of this, it's a very ambient soundtrack. And in Ennis Main, there's a really cool track that is those minors. I'm kind of obsessed with the minors, with the ghosty minors, because that is something that I've always thought was scary. And in one of his music videos, he, he was showing some minors too. I, I absolutely love it. 